Welcome to Living in Victory. I am Pastor Roger, pastor of Victory Center Church. Today we're doing uh, part two of, a, of the wonderful teaching that we've started with uh, our very special guest, Pastor Tim. Pastor Tim, thank you for joining us today. Praise the Lord. Is a, God is man. so good, and I'm so glad, and I am so happy that I am doing ministry with you today. And we're, we're talking again, uh, we're continuing our, our, our teaching on the anointing of the Holy Spirit today? Yeah, last episode we uh, talked about the anointing of the Holy Spirit and we had this question, how to receive, be activated, and grow in the anointing. Yeah. And I, I yeah. wanna say, if you guys haven't watched part one, you gotta watch part one, okay? Yes. Watch part one, this part two. Well, it was really anointed. It's really it, anointed. <laughs> I, we were just flowing in the anointing. And uh, it was, <laughs> praise it was the great. Lord. It was great, there, we demonstrated the anointing. So this is part <laughs> two, so if you haven't watched part one, go back, watch part one, then watch this part. So sorry, sorry to interrupt. Amen, amen. Right. So we just discussed uh, previous about, uh, previously about uh, the, the mantle. You receive it, the anointing, uh, through the, the, the mantle of the Holy Spirit. And, and second is uh, by consecration. Mm. By consecration. What's the consecration? You know, when you are being set apart, consecrated, the anointing set you apart for the calling which God has for you. And that is why everyone is unique. Mm. When God has called you, don't worry about, don't compare yourself to anyone. Just grow in that anointing because you are consecrated for that purpose. Now, I would like us to read Romans chapter 8, verse 30. Mm. Will you please just uh, read it, Pastor Roger? Romans chapter 8, verse 30. Verse uh, 8, 30. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Amen. Why is it that King David was anointed three times? Mm. First, he received the anointing of his calling as a king. He was first anointed as a king. Mm. And second, he was anointed to be justified in his calling. Second Samuel chapter two verse four tells us that then the men of Judah came to Hebron and there they anointed David king over the tribe of Judah. When, he, when David was told that it was the men from Jabez, Gilead, who had buried Saul. Now, when David was anointed as a king, he was not yet in the throne. Mm. He just received a calling. And after that, <laughs> There was just preparations. But time has come that that calling was realized and he finally anointed in the throne. So the first calling was he was anointed for his calling as a king. Mm. He was not yet in the throne. The next level there was he was anointed to be in the throne and mm. finally stepped down as a king. Wow. Amen. I believe that all of us were called. Amen. We were called, but we are not yet pastoring. <laughs> but after all these preparations, you know, the Lord has anointed us to be in gigs in that ministry. If I would may, uh, I would just tell uh, some of my testimony. Many years ago when I was just a small boy, I was, you know, my assignment was to pastor our caravel. Yeah, caravel. Right. <laughs> you were pastoring your caravel. Caravel. <laughs> Pulling the plow, right? Yes. And then one day I was riding at the back of my caravel. There was a noise, noise in heaven, and it was an airplane. When I look up on that sky, there was an airplane, and suddenly there is the desire of God for me to ride on that airplane, mm. to go to different countries in the world and preach the gospel. And, and suddenly I said, God, time will come. I will not just riding at the top of my carabao, 
but I will be riding on that airplane. And I did realize that afterward, it was an expression of my calling to international ministry. Yep. And afterward, when the Lord has visited us, starting to the last Sunday of 2003, when revival broke out in that small church we just started, I tell you, the following month, the following year, God has opened for me. And so that anointing actually repositioning me, not only to have a call of an international ministry, but now the Lord has anointed me to do it. So I kept flying to different parts of the world. Mm. And now I'm here. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, and, and <laughs> you know, one, one point I really, man, something you already said was, being that being set apart yes you didn't have to be somebody else mm. <laughs> that's a good word you know you were on the back of the carabao yes. looking at the airplane saying i'm you know you weren't <laughs> trying to be anybody else yes you weren't trying to be you were you were just stepping into what the call of god has Amen. i think one of the big distractions a lot of people have is they try to be somebody else yes instead of God who, who called them to be. And yeah. finally, they are tired of it. Right, and then, <laughs> and then an, another thing I see, and it f so falls in line with what you're talking about right here, is that um, many times, um, you know, like Reinhard Bonnke ministered to millions and millions. Yes. Don't you know that before he dies, they calculated that he was able to reach out 77 million Bro he brought those numbers to Jesus. Mm. And how, how many people were at his first meeting? Maybe 10, 20? I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but, yeah. but he didn't start out with a million yes, people. He yes, started yes, out right. with like, you know, just like King David, he got anointed to be king and then he went back out in the pasture. Amen. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he didn't start out that, with that. that. That's interesting because many years ago, the mission director who sent uh, Reinhard Bonnke to that place, he relayed to me that he just went there and does a mission. And he doesn't know afterward that God has anointed him mm. for that great ministry. Right. You know, you know when, when the Lord has just anointed you to, in, to international ministry, you just, through that, through that missionary, you came to know my name and mm. we just had this communication. And in that anointing in your life has brought you to different places uh, in the Philippines. And then you would realize that you are operating beyond your ability. Oh, yeah. This it didn't take, that didn't take long to figure that out. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it, was way beyond my, it was way beyond my ability immediately. Um, but, but, the, but one thing, you know, if I would have gone to the first evangelist meeting I had with an expectation of 8 million people showing up mm. and been so disappointed yes. that I said, well, this obviously there's obviously no anointing here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes when people get so disappointed before there's a time for the manifestation yes. of the anointing to show up. Yes. You gotta, you gotta be patient. <laughs> you gotta be persistent and patient. Just like King David, he was persistent and he was patient. Yes. He knew he was anointed. Amen. He was anointed as a king. And he knew he, he was called for that position. And s after that, he came into that level that he was anointed as a king. And next there is, he was glorified. In other words, mm -hmm. he did not only become a king in Judah, but God expanded his territory. And even Israel. Yeah, Second Samuel five uh, verse one. Yeah. All the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron. Okay. Mm -hmm. He went from being go back to the sheep now yeah. and justified. Now he's glorified. All the tribes of, <laughs> of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, "We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, while Saul was king over us, 
You were the one who led Israel on their military campaigns. And the Lord said to you, you will shepherd my people, Israel, mm. and you will become their ruler. Remember, before he mm. got to shepherd the people, he was, amen, amen. He was shepherding the sheep. Hallelujah. When all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, the king made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. Israel. Man. Hallelujah. He's not only king for Judah, but Israel. Amen. And people recognize that. You know, as we keep increasing in our anointing, we know how to increase by doing it, pursuing it, yeah. be persistent on it. Amen. And people start to recognize that. We are not seeking for human recognition, but it's a natural thing. So when you pursue what the Lord has anointed you to do, people started to recognize that. And of course, that's for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. So, number three. Number three. By being connected to the head. I would like us to read, uh, if you would mind uh, reading that, uh, Psalms 133, verse 2. Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, <laughs> running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. Man, that is an awesome yeah. picture. <laughs> I appreciate that more now than ever. <laughs> the, the analogy the of beard, an oiled you know? beard is, uh, somehow speaks more to me now. And that's the reason why you grow your beard. That's right. And preparing for the increase in the energy. Amen. I need something to catch Amen. it. Amen. But, you know, Pastor Roger, the very nature of the anointing of God is pouring down. Mm. It's not going up. G going down, running down, running down. In verse 2, it says here, I it is like the precious oil poured out on the beard, in the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard. Two times in this particular verse, a mention of running down. Mm. God has anointed Aaron, but that anointing will not meant to just stuck on his head. But once that anointing is poured out on his head, the, the nature of that anointing is to flow down to the body. Mm. And don't you know that this is a very good, wonderful picture of a church? Mm. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the head of the church. Amen. Jesus Christ, the anointed Savior, He is the anointed one. He is the head of His church. Amen. Hallelujah. He is the head of the church. And Jesus called apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, pastors. What's the purpose? To equip the body. In other words, that God used them to empower the body of Christ to fulfill their divine mandate. And so, when the Lord has anointed His servant, that anointing is meant to flow to the body. Haven't you realized that when you recognize that you're anointed as a pastor of Victory Center, mm. you even started to impact your wife, and your wife started to cooperate to operate under that anointing in both of you is now pastoring this church. And as you operate together in that anointing, that anointing is start flowing. And many of your leaders are being activated, growing that anointing. And I, I am so I am so you know happy to personally watch how your people are just operating under that anointing. Just last night I saw in my own eyes one of your key leaders. He's doing repair, mm. improvement, preparation to, to the church in preparation for Sunday. And there's another one anointed for technology, mm. Brother John, and he's just preparing everything. And it will make your job easy in enjoying what you're doing because you let down that, you let the anointing flow to your people. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And, and part of that is really to understand that, you know, as a leader, 
I'm I have the freedom in the anointing and under the anointing of Christ, I have the freedom to empower others Amen. to step into that anointing of Christ. Amen. Because Christ is the anointed one. Amen. And he, he, you know, he has multifaceted grace, mm -hmm. you know, which is a divine enablement and favor. The multifaceted grace of God is impossible for one person to exhibit all by themselves. And the grace that's on me to do one thing is going to be different than the grace that's on somebody else. You know, I could I could be there for a I could be there for a week straight in in at the church mm -hmm. trying to accomplish what those two guys did in a couple hours. <laughs> yes, because they're anointed for it. Yes, it, and this is this this is uh, what make us uh, you know uh, excited about the anointing that is flowing in your life activates the works, the talents, and the abilities mm -hmm. God has given them. That, that anointing just flow and empowered them to grow in what the Lord has called them. Their expertise. And, and as you do that, more and more, God will multiply what he entrusted to you. Amen. Because you are not keeping it away. Not, not unlike that person in at Matthew chapter 25 that he dug one of his talent in because he is afraid. You are not afraid. No. You just keep releasing it yep. and it keeps multiplying. Yep, cuz God's given his God's given his people so many gifts and talents. Amen. And they just need a place to be able to shine. And that's why there is no place of insecurity in the body of Christ. Amen. There is no place of insecurity in the place of a good in the heart of a good leader. And and, and you know, I am so blessed that while I'm here in America ministering people or leaders, pastors in the Philippines, uh, especially in the Life in Jesus ministry, is uh, doing their best. And so ministries, although uh, we're in this challenge, but people are, are being ministered to in different ways. Amen. You I know. just was informed that some of our prayer group just came together and prayed for the situations. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Without yeah. me commanding them to do. Amen. <laughs> and even while you're here, and you're connected to them in the spirit and you've Amen. empowered them, you've released them, Amen. you've equipped, you know, they're equipped, they're Amen. empowered, they're released to, <laughs> to serve and you're still connected to them via technology. Amen. You're still able, you know what I mean? They're, able to, the they're able to bring you back to good report and you're Amen. able to share. You're like, wow, praise, praise God, Amen. this is awesome, you know. Amen, hallelujah. And number four, by receiving the breath of power, mm. the spoken words, that is in John chapter 20, verse 22. And when that he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. In other words, the breath of power. The Holy Spirit is the source of our power. The breath of power. In John, 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, 20, 27, if you would please read that. As for you, the anointing you received from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you but as this anointing teaches you about all things and as the anointing is real not counterfeit just as it has taught you remain in him amen you know john 1 1 tells us that jesus was the word and the word dwells among us emmanuel and in jesus the Emmanuel, the Word, has accomplished his divine assignment on earth. He released that Word. Mm. He released that Word, received the power, received the Holy Spirit. And in, in, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, tells us that that anointing is none other than the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus knew that we cannot accomplish our divine assignment without the Holy Spirit. Well, in fact, he depended so much on the Holy Spirit while he was on earth because he operated in a human capacity. He needed the Holy Spirit. It doesn't mean that he stopped to be, he ceased to be God, he stopped to be God. No. He came as a human being to fulfill his divine assignment. What was his divine assignment? To be crucified on the cross for our redemption, to finish what we cannot finish, to accomplish what we cannot accomplish. And that afterward, he said, it is done, it is finished. 
and he realized that the work he started could only be, you know, be fulfilled under the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is why uh, the book of Acts is necessary for us to study and learn because it, it is our pattern. It is, it, is, it is really our pattern. <laughs> when, you know, I, I, am, I, am, I am a strong believer that in these last days, there is an explosion of growth to our churches. We just mentioned a while back that uh, when, uh, when Peter received that power, he stood and just preached about the, what Joel has prophesied in Joel chapter 2. And then power of God just convicted people and then 3,000 got saved. And, uh, and, 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 and it tells us that in God added to their numbers daily. Every day, Every day. there is growth. And, uh, and, 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 and that, is, that is something that we need to realize, something that we need to um, uh, uh, pursue in our generations. We need to be totally dependent on the Holy Spirit. Well, you know, and even Jesus said in John 6, 63, uh, he said, you know, my words, he said, the, wor the words mm -hmm. are spirit yeah. and life. Right. The spoken word, you know, we talk about the logos and the rhema, the written mm -hmm. word goes into the spoken word. There is spirit and life on mm -hmm. those words. We are, we're releasing the spirit, the spirit of God, Mm -hmm. Through the Word of God, it's released when we speak it yes. out. You know, that's right. that, that is something that we can't. Yes. We we really can't emphasize that enough. Yeah, <laughs> Just, yeah right. Because even even as we're reading these verses here and we're speaking the Word out to you, we're releasing the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And and if I want to release the Spirit of God into my situation, I, I know. I know Christ is in me, you know, as a, and you're a born-again believer, you have Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yeah, the hope well, of glory. How, well, how do you get the hope of glory out of you? Mm -hmm. You speak him out. <laughs> speak it out. <laughs> you speak it out, you know. Amen. You, you know, and, and you, you, it's like uh, putting, putting, uh, putting gasoline in your um, gas tank. Yeah, gas tank. How do you know you got enough gas in there? Because mm -hmm. it comes up the neck. Yeah. <laughs> it starts to right. overflow. How yeah. do you know you got enough word in you? It'll start it's overflowing, overflowing yes. in you. You know, you take a sponge. You know, when you put pressure on a sponge, you squeeze a sponge, what comes out of it? Whatever, whatever's in it. Yeah. You know, and when we put, when pressure gets on us, what should come out of us? The word should come out of us. Yeah. Because that's what's going to change that situation. The spirit yes. is on the word. The spirit is the word. The spirit it, is life. The, the word is life. The word is spirit. Yes. Even from the beginning, mm -hmm. when God created all what we have now, the world, the universe, he just speak the word. Spoke the word. He spoke the word and... Holy Spirit moves and hovered, hovered around. W w when we look at the scripture and it says, be like dear, ch dear children, imitators of God. Yes. And let the same spirit that's in you, Amen. that was in Christ Jesus, who thought it, who, who imitated, who acted like and, and, and did what his father did. And Jesus tells us in John 14, he said, it's not me, uh, it's, it's not me doing the works. I'm just speaking the word, Amen. and it's the Father in me right, who's perfect. able to do the works. Amen. How did Jesus do it? Jesus didn't say, oh, man, you look really sick. <laughs> he <laughs> said, be healed in Jesus' Amen. name. You know, Jesus said, just be healed. You yes. know? And we get to have that name of Jesus. When God said, you know, in the beginning of Genesis, he didn't say, ooh, God said, wow, it's pretty dark. <laughs> <laughs> He said, let there be light. And the Amen. darkness didn't argue. You know, I think one of the things that we, and again, I, I really believe this cannot be emphasized Praise enough. Praise the Lord. As believers, Ooh. especially as people, like uh, people who are in a position of ministry as pastors, Amen. we don't have to acknowledge the darkness hmm. more or even as much as we get to declare the light. Amen. Okay. It's not like, oh, I, if I don't acknowledge it. No. You, but God takes us to a problem. Mm -hmm. He doesn't cause the problem, but he, when God, when you show up at a problem, 
it's because you're the solution. It's because you have the answer in you. And Amen. it's the Word. It's the Spirit and life of Amen. the Word and the authority of the Word. You know, Amen. And, and you're in the middle of a difficult situation, not to have difficulty, but to be the solution and, and to be the light. And, you, you know, we see that so much with what's going on right now. You know, we're children of light. We're children. We're not children of the darkness. We're children mm -hmm. of light. Colossians 1.13, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in the kingdom of darkness anymore. I've been transferred out of that. I'm into the kingdom of light. So now, no matter how dark it gets around me, you know, like James 3, 4 says, mm. the word is my, the word of my mouth, my tongue is my spiritual rudder, is my rudder that's going to guide my life in the direction I choose, Amen. regardless of how strong the winds are blowing. Mm -hmm. You know, on a rudder on a ship, when the winds blow, they just use that to direct yes. themselves. Amen, right. And that's what, whatever circumstance you may be facing, Use the word of God that, that in your mouth, <laughs> right, as your rudder, to 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 not just not to be under the circumstance, but to be on top of it. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's and what that's we why we need to be led by the Holy Spirit. We need Amen. to be operating in the realm of the spirit, not in the realm of the natural. Because if you're operating in the natural, you cannot really understand what we are talking about here. Yeah. Because you you, you <laughs> just keep on rationalizing, and you don't you, you don't come into uh, you know you don't understand it, but. That's the reason why we need to be born in the Spirit, to be able to operate in the realm of the Spirit. Amen. We can only understand the things of the Holy Spirit if we are born, born in the Spirit, because that would shift us, reposition us into the kingdom of light, Amen. kingdom of God. And we cannot understand things in the kingdom if we are not born in that kingdom, the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you know what, Timber, we got about, the Lord. we got about two minutes left. Amen. Would you would you just decree and declare Amen. over the people? I declare in the name of Jesus that if you're struggling something in your mind, mm. you are rationalizing things and you start to operate in unbelief. I declare in the name of Jesus that as you connect with the flow. Let the Holy Spirit clear up your mind. Mm. The Holy Spirit will speak in your heart and you receive the word that will enlighten you. And those of you who are being confused, in the name of Jesus, receive clarity. Receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Have the mind of Christ in the name of Jesus. And if some of you who are sick in body, receive your healing. In the name of Jesus, mm. in the name of Jesus, be healed right now. And those of you who are worrying about things that is happening today, Lord, in the name of Jesus, strengthen them. I pray that you will live in victory. You will Amen. be empowered. And victory is not something that you just know by words, but it's something that you will experience right now. Amen. Father, I pray that you will bless Lord. each one. Let them experience your love and your miracle. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Pastor Roger. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Tim. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Wow. Wow. I just want to say, keep living in victory. Keep walking in faith. Uh, we are people of faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. And God always causes us to triumph. So until next time, keep living in victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.